Hello dear viewers, welcome to this week's episode of the program Everything Catholic, that favorite TV program where we talk about everything and anything about the Catholic faith and the Catholic Church. We continue today our discussion <clears throat> on the sacrament of matrimony and today we'll be dealing specifically with marriage impediments. My name is Father Silvanus Ame and I welcome you to the program as usual I have with me in the studio. Reverend Father Boniface Mabel, welcome. To join with us in treating this topic and to throw a lot of light on the issue of marriage impediments, we have a very special guest, a very distinguished scholar. His name is Reverend Father Dr. Christopher Unubia, the priest in charge of St. Mary's Pastoral Area, Apu Duse, Abuja, Nigeria. Father, you are most welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's talk about marriage impediments, Father. In brief, let us start with this. If you will kindly tell us, explain to us and our, our viewers what an impediment is, as well as um, the forms in which impediment may exist. Before explaining what <coughs> an impediment is all about, you know very well that when a man and a woman are in love leading to marriage, uh, they are there to get married. But the question is, that, is there anything that can stop them from actualizing their dreams? Yes, of course. There are some obstacles. And these obstacles are known as uh, individual derailment impediments. Mm -hmm. And uh, the individual derailment impediments are things, or rather you can say factors too, which disqualify a person from marrying. Okay. And this very <coughs> impediment can also be either absolute or relative. Mm. They are absolute if a person is barred from marrying anyone at all. Completely. Completely, yes. And they are relative if they are barred from marrying someone in particular. Specific person. Yes. So, these are obstacles. And then, there are 12 of them. 12 derailment impediments. You have the lack of age, importance, then um, you have prior bond, prior consanguinity, bond. yeah, prior bond, generally, that is the name, bond. Okay. Consanguinity, you have disparity of culture, those who are in secret others, those who are bound by a public perpetual vow of chastity in a religious institute. We may have to explain this. Public mm -hmm. perpetual vow. We have to take note of that. Then abduction. We have crime of conjugal site. Then affinity, adoption, and public property okay these are the forms <clears throat> they are that in which impediment may exist yes. now uh, you did mention something that um, impediments may bar someone from marrying uh, so does those uh, impediments do they only prohibit marriages from taking place or can they also affect um, uh, already existing marriages yes it can bar someone from marrying and some people, for whatever reason, might even hide this impediment from their neighbor. And the marriage has been celebrated. It could be celebrated and in the presence of even the bishop, even the Holy Father, the Pope, and with many priests gathered. Once there is an impediment, and it is proven that there is impediment to that very marriage, the ecclesiastical tribunal will grant the declaration of nullity to that particular marriage. What does it mean to grant declaration of nullity? Mm -hmm. That this marriage, yes, was celebrated, but it was celebrated in error. So in other words... Because there was an impediment the that if, if, if that impediment was to be noticed prior to that marriage, mm -hmm. the marriage wouldn't have taken place at all. Okay, thank okay. you very much, Father. While you were talking about uh, giving us an, a better understanding of what impediments mean, now you mentioned the times or form, and uh, it will be fine, at least look, let's speak about four, which are very serious concerns. What's public, 
prior public uh, bond or a prior bond, consanguinity, uh, public propriety, and um, those in the ordained or religious life. Okay. Why those constitute impediments in themselves in marriage? Prior bond of marriage. Mm. It just means that someone who has married before cannot go ahead to marry without removing the bond in the prior marriage. Okay. The person cannot go ahead. And the only, only if, it, if, it, if the marriage was celebrated in the church, the only competent Sorry. institute that could grant that is the ecclesiastical tribunal. The person will have to go to the tribunal to explain that yes, there was a prior bond of marriage. He mm -hmm. married before, and now he wants to marry someone, or she wants to marry someone else for whatever reason. The reason will be stated at the ecclesiastical tribunal, mm -hmm. and then the tribunal will, for whatever reason, if the if the if it's proven, we now declare the prior, the previous marriage null and void. If that was, but if if for instance, this person goes ahead. To marry. To marry. Without settling the prior bond, the present marriage is also having a serious problem. But the bond of marriage, as the church teaches, can only be broken by death. So if it was a validly celebrated marriage, how can this prior bond now be declared now? Now you use the word validly celebrated. Mm -hmm. You are now bringing us to another point. Because if you say that marriage was validly celebrated, then the ecclesiastical tribunal cannot grant a validly celebrated marriage null and void. So no. a prior bond that can be nullified is one that probably has some invalidity attached. Yes. Okay. And then if, if you come to issue of um, how a marriage could be ended, that is another point which may be subsequent discussions you bring it in. Yeah. It will have dissolution of marriage, marriage. Mm -hmm. which can be done by death or a marriage that was rectified and not consummated. That one could be done by the Holy Father. Okay. Right. And then the, the other aspect of it is this, the, uh, the one that will be done by the ecclesiastical tribunal. So for that, the question of consanguinity too. Consanguinity has to do with blood relationship. To what level? Now, consanguinity, that is the father and the, from the ascent, let's just put it that way. From the ascent, it has a way of understanding it. From the ascent, you, you, it is very clear. I ought to get a chart that will help us to understand it very, very well. Now, consanguinity. We have, for instance, myself as the common ancestor mm -hmm. eh, with my wife. Right. Now, we gave birth to two children. Okay. A son and a daughter. Okay. Now, the daughter, the two children okay. are related to me in the second degree. Yeah. I'm number one. Yeah, number two. Number two. Now, my daughter's uh, children and my son's children are also related. Oh, yes, as cousins. They are, all, they, are, they are cousins. Now, how are they related? My daughter, my daughter's son and my son's daughter, daughter are related in the fourth in the third degree in the third degree mm -hmm. no what am i saying no i'm uh, trying to they are related to their mother let me repeat that again mm -hmm. i am the common ancestor mm -hmm. my children they are related with me in the second degree now they are children <coughs> the daughter of my son mm -hmm. is related to my own son in the third degree okay are you getting it and then the son of my daughter is related to my son in the third degree okay. now two of them the cousins are the fourth degree okay and that is where it stops 
If it goes beyond the fifth, then the church didn't say anything about it in terms of consanguinity. Okay. It stops at the, the fourth, degree. fourth degree in the collateral. But in the direct, direct nothing at all. In at any degree, they can't get married. Okay. So that is to say marriage cannot happen between first relatives up to the fourth degree. Yes. In the collateral line. In the collateral line. In lines. the direct line. Nothing at all to all degrees. <coughs> yes. Now, okay. um, there is also um, the question of public propriety. I mentioned that too. If you just uh, briefly explain what that means. When a man is married, well, not really marriage, but is staying with a woman for a long time, even with children. Mm -hmm. And after a while, he decides to go to that same house of the woman to marry perhaps the sister of the one he's living with. Or the one he he's living with, has been living with. <coughs> it's not, it's because it's already a, it's, it's public, it's known. You appropriate someone after staying with the person for a long time, you now discover the real one in the same house. <laughs> oh, another house. Uh, no, the same house. Okay, it has to be in the same in house. In the same house. Okay. It's not allowed. No, no, no. It's no. not allowed. So that is public property. Right. It's now be culturally taboo. Uh, yeah. So that you are not marrying the person, but you are staying with the person with children and later on, maybe uh, whatever intervention or inspiration you discover not that good one in the same house okay we'll hang it on that note and uh, proceed on a very short break wow. when we come back we shall continue it has been an interesting discussion on marriage impediments please don't go away stay with us everything catholic a program that discusses anything and everything about the catholic church faith doctrines morals canon law church governance Papal documents, you name it. As long as it is Catholic, it shall be discussed. Join Father Amir Sivanus and Father Nebo Boniface, two priests passionate about teaching the true faith of the Catholic Church, as their host bishops, priests, religious, and distinguished laymen and women to discuss and simplify the wealth of the Church's teachings. Everything Catholic, showing on Catholic television, CTV. Everything Catholic, teaching the faith. Welcome back. It is still the program Everything Catholic and we have been having a very interesting discussion on marriage impediment. We left off on the note of the explanation of some particular impediment. Now, Father, I would like us to look at the impediment of impotence. What exactly does the law of the church consider as impotence in both men and women? Now, impotence is the inability to engage in sexual intercourse in a human manner. Okay. Yeah. Importance disqualifies a person from marrying if the inability is permanent. It's permanent. permanent. And if it is present before the exchange of consent. Before the marriage. Before the marriage. Because at times one for whatever reason maybe ill, Ill health oh, could lead to importance after the marriage remember we are talking okay. of impediment what bad someone from, from marrying marine. before the marriage mm -hmm. the importance exists before the marriage now what actually it, it, it could be relative or absolute. absolute okay absolute is when someone cannot have sexual intercourse at all. The person cannot perform at all with anybody. Hmm. Anybody, it happens. And then it is ab uh, absolute, sorry, it is relative, relative when that person cannot perform with a particular person. But the person can also perform with another. It happens. Really? Yes, it happens. <laughs> yeah. So it is absolute. It is also relative. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it, it happens. It okay, happens for whatever you. psychological okay. uh, so okay. reason. Now, what constitutes it? Impotence. Okay. If the person is lacking the organ on both sides, okay. if the organ, the sexual organ is not there, okay. 
because for for sexual intercourse to take place there must be on the part of the man there must be erection there must be penetration and there must, even if it's partially not fully yeah. penetrated mm -hmm. and then there must be ejaculation, ejaculation. that's right these are very important things right. it must be present must be present where they have so it. if the if the organ is not there you can't be talking about the erection that's right and then you can't even be talking about penetration and you can't be talking about ejaculation, ejaculation and then for the woman on the part of the woman there must also be the sexual organ of the woman present in order to be able to receive yeah. the the, the uh, sexual organ of the man okay now uh, sometimes too we mix this up with uh sterility which is different that one is just a, a, a sickness and it doesn't constitute it's not an impediment at all mm -hmm. that a woman has a problem not to conceive because of uh, you know she has a wo problem in the womb that is just a sickness okay uh, but okay. it's not part of impediment okay thank you very much father now you know with the with the impediment being things that can bar you know a marriage from taking place an importance as one of such are there possibilities where Impediments can be waived when they are known prior to marriage. For instance, impotence. A man wants to marry a woman, or a woman wants to marry a man, discovers that this man has this problem, yet consents to it. So what is the take of the church in this particular sort of situation? Yes. Um, we omitted something. Okay. And now with this question, I think uh, <coughs> you will have to explain that. There are... There are two types of importance uh, sorry uh, um, impediments. impediments okay the one of divine law and the one of the ecclesiastical law interesting okay now the one of divine law cannot be dispensed for instance importance okay there are once one is important <laughs> no marriage hmm. yes absolutely as serious as that there is no let me just uh, ask something quickly on this. Uh, okay. In line with this question, question. Father asked, um, one of the things that must be present for marriage is, or the understanding of marriage is that it's uh, for the companionship of the couples and must open leading up. to procreation, procreation. and the we'll education life, of yes. children. But supposing two impotent people agree to marry knowing fully well that their status they can't both have children but they want the companionship can that happen no it's of the divine law so it can't be Absolutely. it can't or whatsoever okay okay um, now um, okay. supposing an important an, an impediment rather is discovered in an existing marriage which the couple themselves probably are unaware of before into marriage, or one party was born alive. What does the church do? What, what, what will the church do about such a situation? But the other party was aware of it. There are two, two scenarios mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. A case where both parties are unaware that they have this as an impediment, or this, that this thing is an impediment to marriage. They don't have the knowledge that it's an impediment to marriage. Mm -hmm. Or the second scenario, one person is aware, but the, co the other party is not aware. Well, if they say they are not even aware, I begin to wonder how did they get to where they are? Did they pass through the marriage course? Because I believe in the marriage course, definitely all these things will be explained. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Maybe perhaps they, 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 they didn't have a competent um, teacher. teacher. Mm -hmm. But if they have, definitely, they should be able to know that these are, these are impediments. And now, if for whatever reason, one, you know, hid that from the other, and after the celebration of the marriage, the other party discovered, mm. the person is not enough to just discover. The person is expected to approach the ecclesiastical tribunal okay. to petition the marriage. Remember, it is the marriage that... Uh, there is being um, uh, uh, tried at the tribunal, ecclesiastical tribunal, and not the persons. Yes. 
So you now petition the marriage by telling the tribunal, oh, I married this man or this woman without knowing that this, this impediment this was existing. Right. But he was aware or she was aware. And then you have to prove it. Well, oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Father. Now, um, by the provisions of Canon 1072, 78 rather, paragraph 2, if you look it up quickly, it talks about impediments whose dispensation is reserved only to the apostolic see. I want to ask what are these impediments and possibly who fall into this category? And again, maybe a two-in-one question, what would be the role of pastors, that is parish priests or their associate, in helping people get such dispensation? Of course, the bishop involved himself. Now, they are very clear there. Impediments from the sacred orders. Oh, <laughs> very clear. I see what stated yeah. there. Too. Stated earlier. Yeah, yeah. Okay. impediment. Okay. The impediment arising from okay. sacred okay. orders or okay. from a public a perpetual vow of chastity. Okay. A brief in a religion. religious, okay. um, you know, a priest. Okay. A, 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 a priest um, ordinarily is not supposed to marry. Yeah. Sure. And if for whatever reason he decides to leave the priesthood to get married, let's be specific a Catholic. Priest, a, a, Catholic 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 priest. Priest. Yeah, a Catholic priest, yes, a Catholic okay. priest. And the way we're even talking about Catholic <coughs> priests, let us also know that the Roman, uh, right. uh, the, Roman the Latin, the, right. The Latin <laughs> right, because uh, the one of the Eastern, Eastern right. churches Eastern also, also married. married yes. So the, uh, the Catholic priest of the Latin right, yeah. Though in the Eastern uh, uh, churches, mm. they have option not to marry, exactly. or to marry. Now, if, for instance, a priest, for whatever is in after ordination, wants to re leave the priesthood and to get married to someone, he has to. There is a procedure, and it is only the apostolic see that, that grants that. that the, the, the apostolic see is to dispense him from the sacred order. Okay. So, very quickly, the role of the parish priest and a bishop in all of this? Uh, the bishop is just to tidy up whatever the, the, documents. the documents and then send to, okay. to, uh, to the apostolic see. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, let me take us back a little. When you were uh, giving the explanation on the impediments on um, consanguinity, you mentioned the number of times the direct line and the collateral, collateral line. I think it would be good if you um, explain very briefly which one is the direct line right. and which one is the collateral, collateral line? Yeah, the impediment <coughs> of consanguinity. Of consanguinity. In relation by blood. I've already explained that direct <coughs> has to do with the father, anything of the Pretty ancestor that flows through him up and down. down. That is in the direct line. Okay. Okay. And then the collateral. collateral collateral has to be like the brothers and the sisters Cousins. going down. But anything that flows to from up and down of him, whether it goes up, the father, the grandfather, the grandmother, and the rest of them, his own children, he cannot marry his daughter. Or his grandchild. Mm. He, can't marry, he cannot marry his grandchild. These are direct. Okay. But the other ones, like the now when we go beyond second cousin, or now, rather first cousin, mm -hmm. when we go beyond first cousin, you are talking of collateral. Okay. Okay. The two now coming together. Okay. But the man himself <coughs> cannot go and marry, even if he's a great granddaughter. Okay. No. Now let's take another question further on lack of age. As an impediment to marriage. Yes. What is the um, ecclesiastical age one must attain to be able to marry? Bearing in mind also that um, different countries have the their ages. own uh, laws as per age. We will take this as a last question very briefly because we are basically out of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Canonically, a man must have completed his uh, 16th year of age. Okay. And a woman, 14th year of age. At that age, they can marry. At that age. In the Code of Canon Law. Yes. But the law also, in another paragraph, 
says that the bishop's conference can stipulate uh, another year according to the culture of their locality yes. but not beyond below this age yes you know in nigeria for instance it is 18 for both the okay. girl and the boy okay. once they have attained the age of 18 they are yeah, of really age true. to marry in nigeria okay, okay. beautiful all right thank all you right. very much father <laughs> that's the much we can take on the program today everything catholic it has been a very interesting discussion on marriage impediments things that may prohibit or can prohibit people from entering into the union of marriage. We thank you very much, Father, Dr. Thank Christopher you. Nubia, for coming on the program today. We thank you for sharing knowledge with us and with our guests. Please do keep a date with us next week. And do not forget to follow us on our social media handles as you see displayed on your screen right now. We are also open for sponsorship to help us keep this program on air. Thank you and God bless you. See you next week.